This time two years ago, we decided to bring all of the production for our clothing brand in-house. And in this video, I'm gonna share all of the processes so you can do that too. So some of you guys might have already seen the two seasons that we did for starting a streetwear brand series. And I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of painful, bumpy roads that we had to go along in order to get to where we are now. And it's all part of the process. You've gotta be prepared to fail. You've gotta be prepared to spend money. You've gotta be prepared to waste money as well. And we did a lot of that and just wasted with garments too. It's really painful, but we got there in the end and now there are some finite tips that just really make the whole process so much easier. I'm going to share that with you today. So the first thing you need to think about is whether you want to be doing single color jobs or multiple color jobs. For example, I do a lot of single color jobs, just like white on black and black on white. And you could do that with green on white and orange on white, whatever. Essentially, my point here is that that will determine the size and the style of the press that you're gonna need if you're gonna be screen printing. And you could set that up yourself quite easily because the most important thing to get right is the off contact. And that is the difference in height between the screen and the platen that you're printing to as well. So you get that right and you're cooking on gas. And another thing you need to make sure that you've got enough tension so your press is always about a millimeter or the size of a coin above the garment at all times so it springs back off when you finish printing and it's just little things like that that you just don't think because if it's all sat down on the garment then you're going to get real ink bleed problems and trust me i got a lot of those there's no better way to teach than to get all my gear out and show you exactly what i'm going to do so we're going to start printing our new collection today so you get a little look at that and you can see exactly how we do everything To save any confusion, this is the Riley 250 press and we've modified it from a four color press to a two color press just so we can store it away a bit easier. So for this job, it's a massive back print. So I'm gonna need to use my oversized platen and I made this up myself because I couldn't buy anything that was the right size. So it's got a piece of MDF and cut it to the right size and shape that I needed. Stuck that on the bottom and then we're good to go. So you see that I've got these markers on here as well. And this is just so I can see exactly what I'm doing with regards to laying up the screen on here. And when I'm setting up the garment as well, so I can slightly see through the garment sometimes, especially with white garments, so you can see exactly where things are. And it really helps you to get things lined up. So you'll notice as well that I've got loads of stuff on this screen. This bit, which is gonna go across the bottom of the garment, we got that for the chest print. This bit here is gonna be inside the neck label. And then this big bit here, as you notice, I flipped the screen then, and I'll show you why in a minute, that's gonna be the back. So it's a big old back print on that. Hence why I'm gonna use this oversized platen for the job. So you'll see that I've got various parts of the design that help me to align this perfectly, like these little crosses and just the way that the typography sits as well. So I can use those lines and guides to make sure everything is bang on. And this is what you call the off contact along the bottom of here. And at the moment, it's all over the place. So we need to sort that out. So you'll see that here we can change the off contact and that we can just twist until we get it right. And I'll show you how that goes up and down. That right now is flat on top of our platen and we really don't want that. And we want it to be about two millimeters. Some people use a pound coin for that gap and uh, a quarter, I think it is out in the States. It's the same equivalent, but that is gonna be good. And you wanna make sure that it's the same all the way around. And then when you finish adjusting it, tighten that back up so it all sits nice and tight. Okay, so we wanna tape this up now. Uh, um, and granted, I probably should have done that before I put it all in place, but it's quick and easy to put it straight back in place because I know exactly where everything is going to be. So what we want to do is we're going to tape all the way around the edges so we don't get any ink coming through these gaps. And then I'm going to tape off the bits of the design that I'm not going to be working with for this first part. Okay, so we've got this all taped up now. So now we just need to top up the adhesive on the platen. That's to make sure that the garment can stick down so it doesn't peel off when you're printing. I want to go crazy with this. And if like me, you're starting to get a little bit messy, then now's the time to start looking after your clothes. So I often just put on a little apron just to kind of 
look after my stuff. All right, so we're gonna work with two garments today. We're gonna work with the white ones and we're gonna work with the black ones. The best thing to do is to do the white ink first because when you print afterwards, you don't have to be so on it with the clear up. You can just print straight with that black through and you really won't notice any white in that black because the contrast is so much higher. Whereas if you do it the other way around and you start by using the black ink, when you print with the white, you're gonna to start to see gray coming through any white and you don't want that, you wanna keep it as bright as possible. What I tend to do is run a pre-order first and that enables you to get a rough idea of what garments are gonna be ordered because otherwise you can end up with loads of random bits of stock. I mean, if you're a huge brand, you may as well just print everything. But when you're small and starting up like we are, it makes sense to do pre-orders so you don't waste garments. So let's go and grab a garment. So what we do is we buy a bunch of garments in various sizes so we get a slightly cheaper wholesale rate and then we just store them and then when we do a collection we print what we get the orders for and we do it like that and that's why we kind of have limited windows of when things are available and limited sizes as well for when people order so for example if you're trying to get something like a large that's quite popular sometimes it can be sold out because we're just running low on stock. And if you're at a stage where you're looking to get your garments, we have plenty that we'd recommend on our store. So feel free to have a browse. So what I like to do first is run a little test print just to make sure that everything's good because you don't want to waste a garment on something like a tiny little pinhole. For example, I've already noticed a bit that I haven't taped off properly and that would have caught me out. So we can just use something like a piece of card for this. So we want to give the ink a good stir. And then we're going to load this on generously. Okay, and I've got my squeegee. It's the perfect size for this, and that's how I measure everything up. And now we're good to go. We just got to load the screen up. So we're going to pull and drag the ink over the design, and then we can do our first test print. So what I like to do is push down first, push down for where the ink isn't on the design, and then push through. And you want to go over it a few times with a squeegee just to make sure you've cleared all the ink through the mesh. Really happy with that. It's just looks like we've got a little bit of ink there that's come through. There we go. A tiny little bit on the E that I hadn't taped up. So good job I did a little test run and did that error on a piece of cardboard and not on the garment. Okay, so the top of the print is going to be about here. So we want to make sure that the hood, I think, dangles slightly over from that part there. And one last check of the hands as well, so you don't get any ink on the garment. These are lovely as well. These are 500 GSM, 100% cotton garments. They are proper nice. You want to load that up. And then I just want to check that that's equal distance either side. Nicely aligned along the bottom as well. Same with the shoulders, trying to feel for where the shoulders are and check that those gaps are nice and even, both sides. Use the line as well for the middle of the hood to determine where that's going to be. So the print's going to start about there and finish right here, so it's going to be nice and centered in the back. So I'm happy with that. We want to make sure that this is nicely pressed down flat, so you get a really nice solid flat fridge. And we're good to go. So this is gonna be a underbase first, so it'll come for a little bit gray, and then we'll hit it again with a second one for the main final coat. So that's our first coat done now. And then what I'm gonna use is a heat gun to dry that off, and other people can use like a flash dryer, but for me, this is small, it's easier to have around in the studio, and uh, I just don't want a big clunky flash dryer. So now that first coat is down, I'm going to do a second coat and this is going to be our final one. She's going to sit on that fresh coat. So again, nicely, nicely press that in. Good amount of pressure and the squeegee at this angle as well. I always start in the same place because you don't want to push down and do it because it might put it in a, a pressure in a different area of the design and you get all sorts of bleed issues. But this is looking great. Really happy with that. So we're gonna give it one more flash. 
That looks great. I'm really happy with that. If I ordered that from a shop and that arrived, I'd be really, really happy. And that's what we went for because the amount of times I've ordered stuff and it's just not been good and you can see that they've done one coat or whatever, then, you know, gets your back up a little bit, especially with luxury streetwear brands. That is all the backs done for the black garments. So we did the t-shirts, long sleeves and the hoodies. I'll go and grab one now. So this is how it came out. So super happy with these. I think they look really sharp and looking forward to getting stuck into the front now. So there's gonna be a graphic here and then there's gonna be a graphic right along the bottom as well, which I think is a bit of a unique placement. All I gotta do now is flip the screen, retape the bits that aren't gonna be printed now and expose the bits that are gonna be printed. So we'll see how they come together. looks good to me so what I'm looking for is a nice equal space along here so the good thing about using this card is you've got these corrugated lines so I can see that the alignment is actually going to be perfect for the bottom of this platen if I line up the garment. Okay, so this came out great, but there's just one thing. There's a tiny little pinhole here, so you just see this tiny little white speck. That's because in the screen, there's a tiny little, a tiny little gap there. If you could see that, it's a tiny little gap there. So I need to take that out. So now that's done, what I'm gonna use is this for the sleeves, because the sleeves use the same design. So the way you wanna set your pattern up is so the neck of the garment is right at the top and the sleeve is here, because obviously if you get it the other way around, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. So that's why I've got the top here coming down to the cuff of the sleeve here, which can sit nicely on there so we don't stretch anything. So that's all looking nice and perfect now. You see I've got the fold seam down the middle here. And I'm also gonna use this squeegee as well, which is much smaller, which will go down the center of this quite nicely. So that's gonna be a much better thing to print with rather than using that massive thing. Printing is complete, so all I need to do now is cure the garments, and I do that using a heat press. And I've got that stashed away in our little fitting room. So what you're gonna need is some Teflon sheets and some greaseproof paper as well. And that's gonna make sure it looks after the print and the garment for you. So you wanna put the greaseproof paper on first, Teflon sheet on top. What I do is set the heat to 185, so it averages between 180 and 190. 180 is what you want to go minimum, so that kind of gives it enough flex so it's cured properly. All I've got to do is put that down, wait for 25 seconds, and then we're good to go. Now all I've got to do is sew on the hem tags 
and then print on the neck label. And it's the same process, it's just flipping the garment inside out and printing on the inside. And what I use for that is white with a tiny bit of black in it as well, because obviously if you did a 50-50, it would be a really dark gray. I would say 95% white, 5% black. And when you print it, you won't see it through the back of a white garment, but you'll also be able to see it when it's actually printed. So I wanna finish by saying thank you for your support. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you're inspired to do the same thing. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thanks a lot.